Right, folks, hope you uh, all got something from the first video I popped out uh, a couple of days ago now. Um, had a bit of feedback, which is all positive, which is all nice, and um, saw a couple of people out of my run this morning, actually, which said they'd watched it, so that's pretty cool. A few members from the golf club. Um, so if it's giving you something to do and a bit of fun, that's awesome. So I'm pleased with that. Um, keep putting, keep getting better and we'll, uh, we'll drop in a bit more putting videos later at a later date, but today we're jumping into chipping. I'm gonna work my way up and then do different ways through, just so you can do a little bit of everything. If you've got a garden, you're lucky, you know, like us. I've got a nice little setup here. I've been really fortunate, actually, that I bought this net about five years ago, put it in my parents' loft, and um, it's been there till now, so it was, uh, a little bit of fortune and meant to be so luckily I can use it to help you guys out so let's do a bit of chipping today um, I want to play a real sort of not what I would call a little chip and run from right off the edge of the green probably you're looking at a, from 10 yards up to 20 yards sort of chip stroke pitch shot um, which we get a lot you know we want to create a little bit of loft get the ball in the air landing nice and soft nice and controlled so we're going to work on that today um, I think from teaching people over the years um, a lot of people seem to feel like they need to play chips like this, keeping their hands ahead and um, you know, creating the shaft lean, arm stiff, stiff wrists, I get said that a lot. I'm not a big fan personally. Yes, if you've got a little seven iron from just off the green and you play it like a putting stroke, you can do that. However, a proper chip for me isn't played like that, which means you don't use the club how it's designed. So what I'm going to show you today is how to use the club properly and play the chips much more consistently, get the strike up, then obviously get better. Um, so the first little thing I notice with a lot of people when they're playing chip shots, if they take their normal golf setup, they stand pretty wide, pretty square, no control. So what we're gonna do is get slightly narrower, or very narrow in fact, club head foot apart, feet apart about a club head, not even that. We're also gonna drop this left foot back we're going to drop it back about half a shoe see that so what that enables us to do is allow the club to work into the position here it means the hips have actually cleared in the full swing we get here we clear the hips create room for the club to work it exits a little bit left lovely but in a full shot sorry in a chip we don't do that if we did that in a chip we'd go and hit it way too far so we need to control this by opening the body up a bit pre-setting the hip turn, I suppose, is kind of how you're feeling. So we're going to firstly take our stance, open it up, drop the left foot back nice and narrow. We're also going to put the majority of the weight forward. Let's say 84, 80, 20. You could go 70, 30, but I want to predominantly keep it left side for this. So in terms of setup, nice and narrow, nice and relaxed, arms nice and hanging, left foot back, body open slightly, just to allow that club to work left. Simple, although that wasn't the best strike we're going to do it again. So we're going to allow that club to work left, much better that time. Okay, so that's the one thing in the setup you must get right, I feel. It's very, very important to get that right. Once you've done that, you're halfway there. The other bit I notice is in chipping, is the club just moves way too much. What I mean by that is this end of the club moves too much. So if you watch good chippers, if you could put a laser on the top of this putter that draws a little line it would just almost draw around sort of just straight back across the across the belly across the tummy because if you watch this little technique here the actual handle is a table there the actual handle doesn't move a huge amount the top half it actually stays relatively here so in fact if you were going to play it simply you'd do that wouldn't you but obviously we need a bit more than that so we're going to work on today keeping the butt of the club pointing towards the belly button the good posture which allows us to hinge a little bit then release the club into the ball now when we release the club into the ball like that we use the bounce of the club what's the bounce people always ask the bounce is this bit of the club here various bounces for various clubs that's something to go into another time but at the end of the day what we're trying to do is hit this onto the ground we don't want this edge coming into the ground because that's what digs when you hit one back and you get this way it digs in like that yeah that's a shot we see an awful lot and the other shot we see an awful lot is when the weight comes back and we kind of get that way and thin it so what we need to achieve here is from the good setup keeping the butt of this really 
stable, close together, not moving too much back through. Won't be seeing that ball again. Um, but that's your basic technique. So I want you all to get out there in your garden. Even if you do it in the house, you can do it without the ball. What you're trying to feel is just see how that almost bounces, brushes the turf. So you want to use the ground a little bit, but we don't want to dig in. We want to get that nice shallow angle of attack, nice clip strike, which really helps. So that in terms of technique is what I want you to go at. I want you to practice. Um, people always ask the question now, what club should I use? Um, I don't think there's a right answer for that personally. Um, if you could knock your driver to a foot from anywhere, at, you know, chipping it, use it because it's just to a foot. So what I want you to do is grab your favourite club. I've got here 58, 54, 50 and a pitching wedge. I'll go up to the pitching wedge. There's no difference in my technique here. It's all the same. Probably grip down it a little bit more just because the shaft's longer for control. Another little tip, yeah, go down it, slows the club head down. So again, the same setup, same sort of swing and everything's working together in one piece. The other thing I think I forgot to say earlier, and I really felt it myself there, <coughs> is the reason this butt can stay nice and still is because we do use the body a little bit. Don't stand too don't stand too static. Get that body facing the target. If we're going to chip in, we want to watch it go in, don't we? So we're here, left foot back, slightly open to create the room, gripping down it, weight nice and forward, and we're just going to let the club do the work. So we're keeping the butt fairly still, back, turn. and that's a real nice simple technique, let's do it one more time, grip down, left foot back, body open, and we're just going to let the club do the work, hinge, turn. the butt of the club has stayed nice and close, you almost get that feeling of putting it into the pocket here, really nice finish, we don't want to see the arms coming far away from you like this, we want it nice and tight to the body, so those are the things to look out for. If you want to send over a video of it and let me have a look that would be awesome um, if you've got any questions or anything you want to have a look at again just pop a question in my email or on the youtube channel and uh, i'll try my best to answer those the next video will be for david whitlow who sent me a lovely email this morning regarding short irons and controlling those a bit better um, so that's going to be the next video especially for david but i think it'll help everyone um, the short irons are important, that's where we make our numbers, make our scores on the golf course, so we're going to nail them. Hope that helps, hope that's what we're looking for, and uh, hope you can nail it. Cheers. Bye.